So who thought that yep. we were going to come it's back here, huh? It's this if one. Th- that that Larry jump scare, man. Oh. Dude, after I saw that, I was so, yes, not able to sleep for weeks. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> and you did oh this God. to me. It was all you. I don't blame you. Yeah, I did a lot of jump scaring really um, in the old days. I did that as a method for me when I was like, falling asleep or dozing off in the middle of the night working on these videos and to motivate myself and tell me that I'd done wrong doing it last minute like I always did I jump scare myself with these kinds of things oh man so I guess to introduce ourselves my name is Trevor from Media Mementos the guy whose voice you hear in here and the unfortunate creator writer and main voice actor for Vegetals Abridged <laughs> And I'm Billy HL, or um, just Billy. I was an actor on this show, and I edited the video about it. How ironic. Yep, we've all come crawling back. So strap in everybody, because this is definitely going to be a long one. If you thought the annoying orange I hate the static background. Just let it move, damn it. Or at least blur in the background and have B-roll. God. You're too hard on yourself, man. At least you're better than what I've done. Dude, yours were... I don't know, man. <laughs> At least I was just I like this. out, I guess. At least this classroom looks pretty cool. Isn't that the one from Doki Doki Literature Club? I think so. <laughs> So, it, it, at the very least, it's an anime classroom. I guess we should talk about how this first came about. I remember when I first told you about the video, I just dropped a schedule on you. Like, so here's what I'm thinking for the month of, what is this, October? No, yeah, November 13th. So here's what I'm thinking for the month of November. And I just threw this on and I wanted to see if you'd notice. I was like, what the hell are you thinking? Like, you're not going to do this, are you? Because we didn't, this was not a, anything you talked to me about before. Or even after. Um, well, okay, after, but not before. And I saw this, and I'm like, you're not seriously considering doing this, are you? Like, are you? Little did he know, not only was I seriously considering it, I was actively preparing for this dark, dark day we would soon be embarking on. And here we are. Yeah, and it, again, it just it was just jarring. I was like, I can't believe we're actually doing this. See, the whole thing came about because throughout most of our time working together on Media Mementos, Billy and I have been active proponents of self-improvement and looking back on the good old days, so to speak, good in massive quotations, to see how far you've come and how much you've changed. What better way to take a look at that than this? <laughs> that back Tourette's guy best off. I forgot that was the YouTube layout video. <laughs> oh my god, anyway, yeah. Now, that's basically... That was his, uh, I think, counter-argument on why we should do this video. Because, hey, we've grown as creators. We've moved on with our lives. And looking back, and, oh, man, I love this little circus picture. It's pretty cool. That was pretty much the main embodiment of it, trying to embrace the old while also ripping it several new orifices. About the show at the time. You weren't you were pretty hard on the show after like right after it ended too. So like this was just going to be that and then some. Really dark. Yeah, I, I will admit some of what is seen here was fueled by that leftover anger because as much as I say that Veggie Tales of Bridge got the happiest ending it possibly could have both in and out of universe. Yeah. I just feel like there was some part of me that was, I guess, never able to fully work it out up until now. Because we ended the show, but we didn't do anything to dress the wounds on anybody's part. So I guess this, in a sense, was the long overdue hospital visit that we really needed. Yeah. I mean, I kind of moved on from it bef- already, but I remember that this was definitely like retribution... Uh, on your end, because it was still just kind of like this looming, uh, just little p- part of your past that you just didn't really want to think about anymore. Like this. 
I remember sitting in the living room of my old house. I don't even think I was listening to the audio, but I was just placing the clips together as like a test to see if it would work. I don't think it was the final version, but that was, uh, I guess, me trying to see if this would work. Technically speaking, it did. The same way that, like, tying a rope around an open wound does stop the bleeding and absorb the blood. <laughs> it just doesn't really work the best, but you gotta make do with what you've got and what I had it's a at the temporary, time. It's a temporary it fix. No, yeah, you gotta do the, the best with what you have at the time, and what I had at the time was the mind of a 10th grader. Just how weird this was. And also the editing method. skills of, like, so I don't know, an eggplant? The, time, I about <laughs> the fucking Windows Movie Maker younger. style. I don't even get me started, again, man. And then when I switched to Vegas, I can guarantee you would not be able to tell, because I didn't know how to use any of the add-ons. I broke out this voice, and then we realized... Look at that nice old recording booth. It sounds like Paul Grape. back to me. You know, I just love all the weird, like, oh, fuck. I love you know, all the weird, like, the oh, sorry, were you saying something? And then I was trying <laughs> I was trying to talk about the birth of your voices, guys. <laughs> all right, so I guess go on. I can do my bit later. Yeah, I don't know. It was just funny just seeing, like, all the weird edits of, like, all the random characters and the placement and the examples chosen, like this one, using, like, all the best or at least most important moments. Um, just to emphasize the points. I think that was like the main thing that I remember making from these videos in particular, especially with like just the random images of the characters uh, just popping up. Again, I wish I did them better, like blur out the background, you know, I was still, well, I was a full-time college student with a lot on my plate. <laughs> so like little details like that just didn't cross my mind, but I, I don't know, like, there's still some charm to it, at least with, like, just how stuff pops up here and there. Maybe it's just me, and because I know both of us were deeply entrenched in the VTA world. But I don't know, I think it gives it a little bit more of a personal feel, because it ties back to the good old simplistic days of Where's My Razor or other episodes that aren't coming to me, but I'm sure they're there somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah. Even now, I'll still say VeggieTales more often than not has some really So I guess while we're talking about whatever's going on here, the reception to this video is like one of the strongest we've ever had. We knew this would do well, but mostly because we knew that a lot of the old TAS Productions crowd was still following Media Mementos, which around this time was about, what was it, 6,000 subscribers? We were quite small. Yeah, it was... I think well, I I can't remember no, the number. No, I maybe seven thousand possibly. I don't remember. That sounds right. I think it was just crossing into seven right around here. So we knew that a lot of the old folks were still watching, but we never would have expected that the new Media Mementos crowd would have liked it just as much, if not more. That was stunning. I don't get this. But welcome at the same time. I don't like it at all. I give this a two out of ten. I'm very sorry I made this one. We Especially were even talking before we got on the mic here. It was like we made our own documentary and people said exactly that in the comments. I'll cut me a little bit more slack though because again, I'm starting off at the time. That's oh, you mother freaking drone. Good old why a water buffalo. And spooky tales, my least favorite episode of the series. But yes, uh despite most of the reception being positive, there was one anonymous cast member who came out like you exaggerated it all. You had no I you had like you weren't feeling that at all and there was not that many oh, well, comments uh well first of all the guy later, didn't come on till late i mostly only way. talked about the deepest frustrations with the, the inner inner really circle like billy here the and then yeah. for that Where matter as some of you might know i was a notorious comment deleter back in the day Sometimes I would leave a rabid one up just because, I don't know. But, yeah, like 90% of the rabid comments, 95, I would just delete them as soon as I see them. So most people wouldn't even really get the chance to look at the worst ones. Which, yes, would kind of alter 
uh, I guess some of the view of how bad it got, which I guess in hindsight wasn't smart. But like I said, back in the day, I just couldn't handle it. And even in the early days, I would delete the rabid comments. I, I must emphasize I don't do that anymore. I think in the last two years, I've deleted three comments, largely for spam reasons, if I remember right. I know at least one. But yeah, uh, whoever the uh, voice actor was, and I'm sure they're watching here, got no ill will against you, you had no way of knowing, You're gonna have no and I wish you the best with whatever you're doing. There's no explanation for what happens or why or anything like that. It's kind of like going in to watch Spaceballs if you have Spaceballs. no idea about Star Wars. The Spaceballs uh, <laughs> comparison <laughs> here. The <laughs> One of my favorite parts, though, about seeing the reception of this video was seeing some rabbits who grew up and apologized for what they did. Because apparently... Yeah, that was... Oh, yeah? That was pretty surprising, yeah. Because apparently they didn't know, like, how bad it got. Even the people who were on our side didn't know how bad it got. A lot of people, even, like, from the outside, like, new people... Um, we're commenting like, oh yeah, I just expected this to be another one of those, uh, oh, I made something funny, oh, it's cringe looking back, ooh, look up better I am, but then they see, like, what was really going on, or what, like, hearing what your side of the story, like, oh my god. And, and to be fair, we did do stuff like that, uh, kind of, ooh, look what the cringy things we did back in the days were, like, uh, the TAS Productions cringe files, or... Revisiting Sean and Halo or Leo No Arms? Sean Halo was really good, man. You just don't get it. It was ahead of its time. You still don't get it, man. I don't think I can ever get it. It's like a racer head. Does anybody really get it? Except don't compare yes, my thing to a racer head. Like, <laughs> racer head is actually like super, super obvious with its metaphor. <laughs> but I love the Lynch fans that are like, no, no, it's so nuanced. And like, is it? I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Those are like a pretentious art house movies are like that. Honestly, I think this one's Speaking okay. of Eraserhead, Talk here's Veggie Tales Abridged. We're talking over the mailman trap episode, which I think I vividly remember this one being the one that got me hooked initially on the show because of the Paul Grape impression and the Archibald impression. It, I don't know, to me, genuinely, it just seemed funny. Like, outside from experience, even now, you know, because I have access to the Tash channel so I can watch these whenever I want. Um, I did look at Mailman Trap again, and I don't know, I'm going to be honest, I still kind of chuckled a little bit. I, I kind of agree, I can't bring myself to laugh just because of how much I groan at it, but I think that, I don't know, maybe if I wrote it one more time, I think I even say this in the video, if I wrote it one more time, and it worked, I wouldn't even say worked more at my delivery, if I just had more experience, I think it'd be pretty good. There's some pretty yeah. good concepts in this I mean, I tweaked a few things like i love the i love the whole jay ward approach of like the narrator and the characters bickering with one another that's always like something I, i'm a sucker for that formula so just seeing you at least try i think was enough for to make me happy even now you know what i, I kind of see it i do like this one better than the first four i will say that much the wise men get angry I honestly laugh at the first four just for how, like, <laughs> just how old they are. Like, I just laugh at just how long it's been. Like, oh my god. Like, this is just, just, just terrible. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just, especially even now as I'm saying it, I'll think back to VeggieTales Abridged going, wow, technically speaking, every single person in this video, these early ones don't count because it was just me, but every single person in this video doesn't really exist anymore. Whether you get down to you, me, uh, some of the other frequent contributors, I can promise you that we're at least 75% different people now than we were back then. I think that's also part of the appeal for me, too, looking at back at some of these, is because they feel like true windows into the past of people that are just completely gone. Stock photo! <laughs> It's slow, it's boring. And for some people, I'm sure they miss their old selves, but 
I know for you especially, you're very proud of the person you've become, and to be fair, you've got a lot of reason to be. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, don't know if I miss old Trevor. Like, I, he was a nice guy and stuff, but I don't know. I think there was just a little bit more growing up needed to do, and now he's me. I feel like yeah. I've grown up. I'm 25 after all. I can rent a car. <laughs> I'm 22, and I'm going to freaking Disney World to work there, so, you know, I mean, we're, we're growing up at people. <laughs> That's right. We can smoke, we can drink, except I don't do that stuff. But we can in theory. <laughs> we can in theory. I don't smoke. That's all I'll say. Well, you know what they say. Anyone who drinks the alcohol is a, is, is a bad person. I was trying to come up with a rhyme there, but I had nothing. <laughs> I can think on my feet with improv, just not with rhymes. Yeah. I love all... Okay, I know I was hard on myself really about the stock photos, but I kind of like them. Just looking at these again. It's, it's a homesickness thing. Yeah. It's kind of what you were saying before. It's a window to a bygone era. Well, I'm talking about this video, but... <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I'm pretty sure we're watching the same video. I don't like the black screens, though. I use them way too much. Actually, come to think of it, I don't think we use the black screen anymore. Mostly because the yeah. avatar style has kind of changed how we do everything. Yeah, because, like, you can't really have black screens if you have an avatar, like, right there. You really only use a black screen as, like, an offhand gag and not, like, a gag and transition. See, speaking of the avatar, I don't think you'll have this same paradox since you're not on the team exactly anymore, but it's kind of a paradox for me. The Billy era feels like it was, like, just recent and it's gone on forever, but at the same time it also feels like the Avatar era, as I call it, that that's been around forever too, so I keep getting shocked as to wow this is how much time actually went by yeah i i don't know i keep it's weird to me well i mean i adjusted pretty quickly but it's weird to sleep at night and not wake up in the middle of the night and have to make a video like i'm just oh i'm going to get myself something to eat oh i'm just gonna work on this drawing it's weird it leaves you much more time to pursue your passion projects, which is, of course, why you left in the first place. So, everyone really liked that joke at the time. And it it's a good thing you did, because I think everybody involved benefited from the decision. Kind of That's right, yeah. stay out! Just a tad, but that wasn't I'm kidding. Supposed I'm kidding. The actual scene. Here's what was supposed to happen. In your the tangent about the math joke <laughs> i'm pretty sure the audio wasn't lost i'm sure the editor was just like huh, it'll be funnier just to show it with just the math worksheet it actually was lost like i i think about a year and a half later i checked the audio and i was like wow sure enough yeah it's not there and people thought it was funny and it makes it hmm. even stranger because Taragaduma actually did voice Dad Asparagus here. So and for some reason, I think it's because I'm actually watching this video and it's bringing up all these memories. But I'm noticing, especially during this commentary, which I guess is naturally how I talk, I have a lot of the same inflections that I would use in VeggieTales Abridged. Hey, it's the old drawing. Because uh, Bob was just... Uh, me talking from my throat at the deepest possible tone. I'd give this a five out of ten. It was all right. But it was still my inflections and everything. Larry's, on the other hand, was much different. See, look, I could still do it. Listen to how enthusiastic I sound. We. <laughs> I'm easily Beezer amused. Look at Beezer. We. You know, this there's a part winter of me solstice winter that, like, I kind of wish. I, was all set I guess I wouldn't have really known before that, like. Of well, I did know the direction it was going to go, but I didn't really know exactly. 
how far I wanted to play into it beforehand, I guess. But I kind of wish I had Bob be like a regular Bob voice and everyone sounds as close to the original as possible to kind of allude to the twist ending. But Larry still sounds like that for no reason. It would be pretty funny. Plus, I think it would just be kind of funnier hearing some of Bob's lines come out of something as innocent sounding as the original. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, hey guys, I'm hiding from the cops. Uh, don't tell them I'm here. <laughs> Look at that little flesh bag. <laughs> That's you. It's young Billy. This flesh bag, little Rumpelstiltskin looking ass. My, how you've grown. Yes, that is Look at me trying to grow out a mustache. I think I'm so cool. <laughs> at least you can grow a mustache. Kind of. It grows out too fast. <laughs> I still can't grow a mustache, man, and I'm 25. It's not fair. <laughs> I imagine if you, like, grow a mustache, like, it just ends up looking like George there. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm going to have a Hmong doll mustache when I'm an old man. <laughs> Look at how enthusiastic I am. I almost knocked over the camera. <laughs> That's a sign of quality. And I was, t I remember purposefully, I used the B-roll where I was talking about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the cut lines where he's talking about robbing the local market. <laughs> I was, I was confused why you left all that out. I kind of did a lot of rewrites, I think. I just wanted to go in a totally different direction. But then it kind of went back to the same direction in the end anyways. <laughs> mothballs. <laughs> smells like mothballs. That's the canon reason, probably. No one wants to be friends with George. But kind of like what you were saying about Mailman Trap, that's mostly my experience with Winter Solstice, where I feel, even though it's rough, I still feel that... There are some good things here, like how the story means nothing to anybody except the hero and the villain. Yeah. <laughs> I think at one point, Mr. Lenko's goes like, why are you doing this? It's, it's pointless. They don't even celebrate that here. Yeah, because they, they don't celebrate it in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, uh, speaking of George and his debut, one of the things I wasn't able to go as in-depth on in this video was your experience with George, because it was from my perspective, but now we've got you here, so Billy, you've got the floor. <laughs> yeah, phoned in intro. Anyway, yeah, so I remember very vividly, you know, the audition process was just, I think me and, me and Trevor were already, like, I think we were already talking, even beforehand, of doing projects. I wanted Trevor to do his Archibald impression for, like, a minor character in this bigger project I was doing that just never happened. Um, but this led to seeing the ca casting call for Buzzsaw Louie, and I was like, hey, I'll just do it, this will be funny. And then I just, you know, did it with, like, um, this... I was supposed to do an impression of, like, filmmaker Chris Columbus, the guy that did, like, Home Alone, Harry Potter, you know? And... I just did that for my audition for both characters, and he seemed to like like the voice f attached to George more than you know Louis. So it just kind of happened. Cool cat. <laughs> I'm getting fucking sidetracked at these visuals here. <laughs> This was one of the first notable times but anyway, tells a bridge going out of its way to mention yeah. that were not and in the show. At that point, I remember George was supposed to be a one-off character. Like, I wasn't supposed to come back after this. Or after that, I should say. Um, and that's when, you know, I saw the... Uh, so I decided in the these uh, future episodes, and it was still so weird seeing them. I was still a casual confused. viewer, but it still kind of was odd. Like, oh man, I'm still, I was still part of the, uh, <laughs> part like, you know, part of the Some show. So it was just like, I'll just play, be a team player, you know, because I was in it. And it wasn't until, like, much later. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. And, like, a year passed when I wasn't really playing the character. I didn't really care. And a lot of stuff was going on in, like, 2016 anyway that just... And Veggie Tales of Bridge was just not really... You know, the top of my head, and they, you barely released in 2016, didn't you? Yeah, that was during like, the infamous first VTA drought where we couldn't get. I think, yeah, that was episode 11, wasn't it? Where we were trying to get that. Yeah, off the and then that one, that one got lost. 
um, and so you had to resort to like last minute stuff like you got the razor song and you i think that was it i don't remember it was in another F major episode that's all i remember was just those like that and another one i barely remember because again a lot happened that year um a lot of regrets but you know luckily nothing related to this i think that was, and that was mostly uh veggie tales live and reloaded anyway that's what i was really tuning in for mm -hmm. And I thought Vegetals of Bridge would just be dead. If I'm being honest, I thought you'd just quit. Like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, there was a time where I was wondering, is this thing ever going to come out? It wouldn't have died from my own choice. But it's kind of like some of the other projects I've done in the past where I'm on board. Just sometimes, I guess, life gets out of hand for some of the others, and I kind of need them to get it done. Yeah, um, like that Loud House musical you made. We don't talk about that. Hey, man, I'm sorry. I'm just bringing up comparisons. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I did kind of have it in the back of my head that you might come back. I didn't think about it very much. But then, like, right as the time when you first reached out to me again, because it had been a little while since I heard from you. Yeah. Then I think I was, if I remember right, around that time, I was kind of starting to plan, all right, George is coming back. But this time I want to give him a little bit more to do because he was just kind of a loopy, loony guy. And we already have enough of those. And that's where yeah, so then you lonely George that's where you were that's where you thought of bringing George back for Rack Shack and Benny's episode because you know he's he's major in that episode anyway so it's like yeah he's gonna come back for that one and that's how it that's how that happened and I literally I remember you sent the email and you're like oh man I was just conceptualizing this episode when you reached out because I was asking so I wanted to check in just because I hadn't talked to you in a while so I was like, hey, why not? Cutting, See what's going on, and then there you go. Where is my razor? For those of you who don't know, yep, and here we are. You became a regular from there after... Uh, what's it called again? What's the 12th episode? Forgot the name. Was it like Willy Wonka and the Seven Clever Boys? <laughs> oh yeah, Willy Wonka and the Three Clever Boys. Uh, <laughs> I still love that namesake, that stupid Phoenix game. <laughs> oh man, it's good. Uh, I know we're kind of jumping the gun since we're not there yet, but yeah, that episode went over really well, especially the George stuff. So I figured, hey, I like Billy, I like his character, let's keep him around. Because get this, and if you work with me and you're actually, you know, nice and cool, I want you to stick around. And if you and deliver your lines on time. <laughs> oh yeah, that was another major part. Did we go over that very much in the video itself? I don't. I I don't think so. <gasps> oh, here they come! I'm already picturing the Great Mighty Poo's intro coming in with these. Yeah. Is this, I love that it used the, fans, like, the just Rayman raving rabbits 2 anyway, footage. They would get <laughs> that was, like, my favorite part. That just really helped with, uh, you know, filling out the B-roll. <laughs> we had that yeah, old, uh, man. I was just gonna say, Ben the Looney. The guy I totally <laughs> didn't reference in the last well, this video about him, so April Fool's Day video. A joke that maybe like 10 people would get. Really fun for <laughs> I got of all of it. I love that video. I love that video. I hate to say it, but I think he saw it and I don't think he liked it. Who cares? <laughs> well, I mean, look, I know Ben's done some... Stuff, let's just say. So I'm not defending, like, the deviant art crap. But there's always, with the Ben Rants era of Ben, back in the Days of Innocence, there will always be that, I guess, nostalgia glasses thing. I guess You get what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah, I get it. Oh, there's the skit with uh, Mr. Line. <laughs> Man, dude, seeing this get animated was one of the highlights of my year. That was the weirdest thing to me. Like, I was already kind of off-put in, in the best possible way with the last one. So then seeing this animated was just like, oh yeah, we're reaching for the stars with this one. I can't believe it's been a while since, like, since that animation was done. It's one of my favorite YouTube videos, man. And I've shown it to my parents and they were like, whoa! I told them, and I was right. If little Trevor saw this, his head would have exploded. Oh my god, yeah. 
I love that. I can't be patient. I'm allergic to that. <laughs> you know that 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 that's something the VTA people would have actually had. Oh, oh, there was a cut gag over there when Mr. Nezer says, "Let's go watch something else." I was gonna put in this weird, uh. A, a, a videotape of this obscure porno called Blarney and Ain't No Picnic. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was gonna put like like that the cover of that when Mr. Nez was like, "Come on, let's go watch something else," and that just pops up in his hand. <laughs> oh! I cut it because it was just like way too specific and maybe a little bit of inappropriate for the joke. But I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up because that actually was a cut gag. Is that a Barney the Dinosaur porn? Yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not extreme. Like, it's actually pretty tame, but it's still very sexually suggestive. Of course. And it's called Blarney. So it's like before. No, I think it was after the dinosaurs did that parody with Blarney the dinosaur. Like, literally, that came about also using the name Blarney, and it was just the funniest shit. For whatever reason, Big Idea did not want this episode on YouTube. Yeah, I was just gonna say, wasn't that the dinosaurs, Barney the dinosaur? And again, and again, and again. Yes, it was. I had to post it on Daily Motion for the longest time before we put it back to you. Oh, the Daily Motion upload. Hate. So much hate. They're still up. Take them down. Wait, no, I guess I'm going to So please, get it off the internet. No, 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 no. Please, I'm an innocent person. Why was there no Chris Chan in this? I should. I totally should have made a character. Well, that's just the thing there, Bob. It's just, uh, I don't, I don't think you're, uh, you're coming about this the, uh, right, the right, the right way. I know I wanted to, I know I pitched a Kermit voice for one of the characters, but that, I don't think you got the, the, uh, suggestion, I think. I think that got lost in the, in the rubble. Yeah, because that was back before, I know I wasn't on Discord, I don't know if you were at the time. Yeah, that was like, it was Gmail. I was still sending Gmail, so, like, I'm sure it got lost in, in there, in that pile. But I know I had ideas for, like, having Percy and, like, Lil P have, like, this Kermit and Robin dynamic, but just a little bit more messed up. <laughs> but, that, yeah, that never happened, because I think, again, the suggestion got lost. Yeah, as, as much as I am nostalgic sometimes for those good old days, communicating with you via Gmail wasn't the most optimal, sorry, optimal idea because it wasn't really an instant response. We would not get our email for hours or days and we would have just a lot of gaps. Oh, yeah. Not to mention, like, George only appeared, like, yearly at that point. Again, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but still. Yeah, that was back before the that, Welcome to the Land of pig. Nothingness days where there used to be, was it a two-month break in between every episode, if that? Yeah. That was both the best and worst thing to happen. Now, I'm not speaking bad about the editor. In fact, I will sing his praises all that's on YouTube. Actually, I don't know. So they found His, loophole, her, they, I to get uh, praises till the cows come home. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I think that might have stoked the rabid fires just a wee little bit, which is not anybody's oh, yeah. fault. We just didn't see it coming. <laughs> no, the people that legally upload our videos to Daily Motion. <laughs> But what's even worse is the color green and the color brown and burgundy and orange and a darker shade of orange. That was the only part of that I remember. I can't believe I remember some of these lines to this very day. I don't know how I still remember them as well. I keep forgetting that you could play as Rayman in Rayman 2. I mean, Raving Rabbits 2. Around this point, the Dude, I cannot wait till we get to the final two episodes. We've got so much to say, but unfortunately, since we lumped them together, we've got so little time. One group was voice crack. It's the same stock photo of the adults and teens. Hello, those are those are classic. They were about my age, so we were able to have a cohesive conversation. There are also young kids who are still into the show who. Sometimes didn't quite get it, but I still enjoyed their feedback. It was nice. So what, what episode are we talking about now? We're, we're on the stock footage. I mean, photos. 
I'm you're talking, to, I think you're talking about like the the, the age demographic. It was mainly mainly older teens, but then there were like younger kids that watched it, and then of course the rabbits. That's what you're talking about right now. Yeah, I'm just trying to picture. Should we talk about the last episode? I guess we've kind of already just discussed that point as much as we could in this video. It covered it quite well. Because I mean, the thing is, is that it's just as simple as like, yeah, the the episode just kept getting lost because the editor like quite quietly backed out Johnny Fiona <laughs> yeah well, I didn't mind I love Johnny <laughs> now that I've actually seen Muppets tonight I can just this adore him once again, the oh my god, I forgot it. I forgot I used yeah. that I footage when you're saying they couldn't handle it and got out of the kitchen. <laughs> oh god, there's some this subtle things That's like that that make me really love looking back at some of these uh, videos on Media Mementos. Is just that I had a, I just picked some of the right clips and photos like Clay Puppington here. But now that I have, I can make that comparison. And it has lots and lots I think this might be my favorite of the Billy era videos. Yeah, you know what? I think this is. Just because of the sentimental value, both with the subject material and also making it. I think this is the only time I've ever recorded a giant video like this. So and it was not tired at the end. I was like, man, I could just keep on going. Yeah. I think I also mentioned this, because I don't think I told you about the making of this in particular. I was actually uh, finish, doing the finishing touches and actually drew... Oh, wait, no, we're, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself on that one, too. Um, drew the picture you'll see later of the bootleg Jafar <laughs> um, during class, because I was allowed to, like do my work and do other projects during class hours because the teacher just really liked me that just really enjoyed my presence that much and trusted me to pay attention to multitask so i was actually doing um editing this video while i was while i was in the in the theater room during class it was weird i didn't know that yeah it was it was such a weird visual um just hearing your voice and just like editing everything I oh, the Jerry. <laughs> the Jerry incident. So oh, the Jerry guy. auditions. I so <laughs> wish I could find the more that Muppet, comment. It was, more Muppet clips. <laughs> it was so funny. It was. I know I keep changing the wording every time, but it was something along the lines of, for the next episode of VeggieTales Abridged, I do indeed wish to play Jerry or something like that. And I'm thinking, you know, bravo, kid, for trying to sound like an adult, but... We're not Sorry. celebrities or anything, and we're always excited to meet It's, like, pretty people. sad. Yeah, don't be afraid. But I don't <laughs> They're trying, like and to be fair, when I was their age, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't, you got, you kind of put yourself in that perspective, and I kind of did that, too, a little bit, when I was, like, really little, but that rarely happened as well. But they didn't send an audition video. Yeah, so shame on you, whoever you are! Just kidding. Just kidding. at all, they just said... I got dibs, I got dibs, and that's not really how that worked. So, Billy, let's see if you can figure this out. When do you think was the last time I got a request to post VeggieTales Abridged back online? I don't remember. I, I know that it was, af like, when the video was published, you were, there were people saying, can you upload them for me? Because I want to see them. And it's that modern family bit. Well, if I had to do it for you... I'd have to do it for everyone. Well, not if you just did it for me. I don't remember the last time, though, someone actually asked you to upload the videos up, back up. The answer is Christmas Eve 2022. Damn. That recent. I mean, at least it's been a year, but good. Good goodness gracious. And if I remember right, they had somewhat of a meltdown when I told them no. Wow. It wasn't like a full on like tantrum or anything, but I was also thinking, all right, no, this is not how you act on the internet, my good friend. Ed, learn your etiquette. Correct. As I'm writing it out, literally, oh, as I'm writing it it's out. The, it's, it's the, it's the Billy Return story. Sky, it's the one for Willy Wonka. Yeah, the Billy Returns one that was darker than the original. And while technically speaking, it was on par in terms of quality, many advertisers and parent groups felt it was a little too dark. So with the next one, Billy Forever, they took a more lighthearted approach. And I don't know, it was pretty bad. I, like, I mean, some of the actors were pretty good in there. Like, uh, you know, Tommy Lee Jones was great. But I mean, you know, Jim Carrey, when he actually, when, when he played... 
um, why I came up with the George who did he play? <laughs> I, I, I think it was Taraka Duma. Wow. With his acting. So, so anyway, you can't tell. George, now a fully fleshed out character ready yeah. To take the world by I, I love like some of the little the errors here with Episode like some of the images accidentally like getting clipped in there. That was like a, I don't know, I don't know what happened. Like it's, it's common when you're having like a, like a really big like rush production cycle so then you see all these little like blemishes here and there but i don't know it kind of adds to it honestly just kind of waiting but then a knight in shining armor came good old days of leaf razor leaf razor that's right still following us to this day still working on standard quote unquote or now known as dorlin whenever that picks up but one thing at a time one thing at a time leaf razor is still on our is still on our network that's the important thing yeah something's happening to it it fell into the he's cool he was cool with that decision and he made it decently quickly that's yeah, what can we yeah. say about three clever boys that wasn't said here? I still think this one Again, we already, we already up mentioned up. it like earlier in the this video because we had nothing else to talk about. So <laughs> I still I stand say by this in being the top the five to episodes for sure <laughs> to this day. I do remember I was actually standing up and actually like kind of performing the characters I would in the in like a theatrical production. Because, you know, I was in taking theater classes at the time. So I kind of put a lot of the practices to making the George character come to life in the weirdest way possible, making him the desperate uh, lol cow, I guess you could, just to put it lightly. A needy, neurotic nobody who's trying his hardest to belong, but it never works. I want, I just want to be a part of the gang, you know, whip de doo uh, to help diggity dog, right? Nobody likes you, George. It's been like, what, six years and no one still thinks about you anymore. I don't even think about him anymore. But Billy, why? You're just not that good. I'm sorry. No! <laughs> it's not so bad. People don't think about any of us anymore now that they can't see the episodes. Unless they downloaded them ahead of time. And for those people, great. But for those who missed out, sorry. No! I guess like Larry is kind of like up drunk Chris ass. Chan, as I've said before, but I want like a full-blown Chris Chan in VTA, like the drunk, distorted one for Larry was not enough. Live and reloaded. Sometimes, even today, I still think back and go, oh, maybe just a couple more, but no, no, it, it wouldn't be the same, we've changed too much. But there were nothing compared to Tales Abridged. I remember yeah, look, the, the Holy Trinity, like right here, <laughs> of old TAS. I like one of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when Kyle and I were thinking of bringing VeggieTales Alive and Reloaded back, we did have a conversation towards the end of that production cycle going, you know, I just, I don't know if we can anymore. Especially since we ended it on such a bittersweet but like yeah. final note. Done. Fully but unintentional. That was soon. never intended so to be the end, but it just kind of worked out that way instead. You let the pig yeah, die at the end of that damn thing, dude. Yeah, we kind of had to. to put in a title. The saddest <laughs> part of any <laughs> VeggieTales episode, canon or not. This one was based on the O oh Santa song, and we had an actor for the peach in this that was later redubbed with someone else. Yeah, I so I do kind of wish though, so not that Johnny Black is, wasn't the last okay, episode of VeggieTales Live and Reloaded. There's but I just wish that Kyle and I knew it was going to be the nice end stomach, when Joe. we were recording it, because I feel like it would have made it just a little more special, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> like, you know, a series finale instead of, whoops, our show got canceled. But we did kind of have I, that I, jumping like forward with the VTA finale. Oh, yeah. Like, that one actually had, like, a... That one legitimately had a good conclusion. Oh, yeah, I didn't really mention that. Mostly because it was introduced in episode I know I discuss it later when we go to the finale, but like I said, we have so much to talk about with the finale, but we breeze by it in this video. Some people actually got kind of misty during the ending there. And I'm like, oh, really? That's I remember. I mean, it felt weird because, like, I was pretty much just starting college at that point when the episode 
uh, premiered. Like, it was in November, and I was still, like, in my first semester, about to end my first semester, too. And it was so, it was so surreal just being there, present for that. Like, I think it went on my off time, and I just saw, like, just the video up, and I'm like, man. It's the end of an era. And I will say, I'm kind of glad we made the finale when we did, because during that year, when I was in college... Uh, don't get me wrong, there were some great parts, like filming the ITV digital remix with you, making Standard come out, uh, starting my review stuff. No, wait, no, no, continuing Media Mementos, that's where it was at. But for a lot of that year, I was in a pretty dark place. I uh, haven't talked much about it, probably won't. Nothing, like, to be alarmed about. But there was, like, a some stuff going on in my head that was kind of... I don't know. But with the rabid stuff, I think that's why I reacted to it as negatively as I did, because of, you know, just kind of where it was at in life at the time, and trying to figure myself out, and all all the stuff. So, if I made it later, when I was, you know, a bit more calmed down, I think it would have been a bit lighter in tone. But I had to have made it when I did, because it needed to be dark, it needed to be kind of gruesome, and it needed to not be funny. This episode was actually originally outlined back in the days of Daniel and the Mailman. And I will say, in the finale, the in my personal opinion, the, the few times where we do try for jokes, so it, was it proves that this show really should have gone for quality over quantity. Story, oh yeah. The last two episodes like still make me and laugh to this day. And it's a 5 out of 10. It's just a typical Love, we're uh, talking so over the uh, Avenue Q one. The debut, debut of Goliath was with not better than the like episode. I mean, video. So, I guess now's a chance. Tell us a little more How about Goliath. How dare you let me out of this <laughs> conversation in the video? I feel outraged about it, Trevor. I must tell you, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should really be ashamed of yourself for losing all of the Viking sent to deodorant. <laughs> what are you even talking about with that? It smells nasty. You should buy some of that perfume. <laughs> but yeah, I remember, like, I, because Trevor, I think he invited me to voice Goliath for that episode um, because he trusted me enough with George that he was like, I'm just going to give you Goliath. I'm like, okay. And so I gave him, like, the, I was like, oh yeah, I just was going to use the original Goliath voice just out of humor. But he said, you should do, like, something a little bit more. He said to do a different t style of voice. And he sent me an example of what I could do. But then I thought, nah, I should go Mad Hatter on this guy. And that's how this happened. And I love it to this day. It's still, like, one of my favorite voices I've done. And I still want to use it as much as I can for specific characters. Right there. You can see it on your screen. Seven out of ten. Much like the original let's see if I can Larry Boy let's see if I can so impersonate it. Hello, everybody! It's me, Goliath! It sounds a little like Milty the Clown, but you get the point. <laughs> Hello, everybody! There's nothing a clown loves more than a birthday! You have a very young birthday! That's right, it's an un birthday! Uh, but I don't know how to celebrate those! I'll tell you how to celebrate it on birthday. You just need a little bit of this, a little bit of tea, a little bit of a clock, and smash it to pieces. Oh my gosh, these two voices just made me remember the dark Lord Bobo the Clown or whatever from that awful Tripping the Rift show. Oh no! Oh my god. The voice just wasn't happening. Uh, is Larry Boy humping the Pope there? Painful. No! Oh my god. Some of the visuals in here are just so questionable, that man. Out about this I do the fact that it like uh, Smells Like Viking. Every so often it has a couple point jokes point where I'm like, okay, that is legitimately it. solid. Really like the, let's go get pizza. Example. All right, anything but Pizza Hut. You don't like Pizza Hut? No. Oh, a cadaver! Yeah, yeah so Scooter was like the ultimate Pizza Hut stand. And then I think even Starting later, someone one, just I'd mentions say, it offhand. Yeah, He's like, you don't like so, Pizza Hut? You want to know where the whole yeah. scented deodorant thing came from? <laughs> 
no? Well, guess what? You're going to find out anyway. Oh, this show was weird. You. So, my friend Kyle, you know, the one that mentioned earlier. Yes, is the, the county fair, fair story with the uh, Viking deodorant <laughs> and the bootleg Aladdin. Aladdin. Oh, here it comes. I guess they got in trouble here it comes. Or something, because now they have uh, these weird bootleg versions of the character. <laughs> the bootleg versions. Ridiculously. Uh, I, I saw one of those at the thrift so store. Not the Aladdin one. I think it was Little Mermaid. But the character that was uh, yeah. there he is. Ah! Jafar, <laughs> there he is. The genie's lamp where this white mist came the out. The fat of hunchback uh, color inverted. Well, not even inverted and colors, just a green Jafar. Jafar <laughs> <laughs> it took me back because I used to do a lot of these like crude drawings all the time on like my old Billy Willy channel, which I may or may not resurrect in the near future, hint, hint, but. God, like I was doing that in during my class session, and I drew, and I was just trying so hard not to laugh and disrupt. <laughs> I love those little touches you do with stuff like this, or uh, in the ITV digital remakes where you make the demented looking cow eating snails. <laughs> yes. I think when you showed oh me God. that, didn't I like double over in laughter or something? Yeah, I think you were just like, you were just, I was showing you like the drawing I did. I'm like, okay, go see it. And you were just laughing so hard. Oh, man. Oh, there it is. Oh, a Kadabra! And the funny thing is, I don't even know if I like Pizza Hut or not. I have not had it in like a decade at this point. It's been ages. It's just average. <laughs> And I kind of know why they I'm, were growing. I'm sure it at I least don't really like pizza that much, though. The only pizza I have ever had, actually, there's been two. Uh, there was a wood fire grill place in the state that I used to live in. And then when Kyle and I visited Ponte Leon's from uh, Kitchen Nightmares, oh, that was terrible. Yeah, let's just say there was a reason why Gordon had always advised people don't go back on the menu, don't go back to the old stuff. That's why you're in this place in the first place. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Kyle and I just took a bite of the slices and we did that sitcom thing where we slowly look up at each other with the awkward face trying to gauge what the other person's gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I think you were telling me about that when we first met in person. Oh, it hadn't happened then yet. Uh, that was oh. that was last March. Oh. Damn. <laughs> I was uh, visiting his part of town and we were like, hey, yeah, let's go over to Denver and Try Ponte Leon's for the memes, and we, we did. We certainly did, and we got Damn. upset stomachs for like a couple hours after. That's terrible. I'm sorry. The guy was kind of a jerk, anyways. I kind of want to make a video talking about my Ponte Leon story. But uh, I think his name no, it wasn't Joe. It was something. He wasn't very nice. These things take a long time. Especially when I mentioned Kitchen Nightmares, he got all mad. And I'm like, okay, uh, time to leave. Can't really change the past, can you? And then eventually, episode There it is, Tale of Two Tales, the episode that changed everything. Yeah, and this was when George returned, because there was also another, if I'm correct, there was this another gap between me voicing George. Another year-long gap. Because the only other character I played was Goliath. The Ningish Merman that sounds Ningish about right. Was a mythical creature that I and a high yeah, because and, and I remember you were just telling me like, oh, you're gonna play George again. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, you know, so I just like recorded so the line, just have last, last minute, and just gave it to you. Well, I remember that vividly, and three. that was when I really yeah, didn't give a shit about hey, BT. I'm gonna be blunt and say that I did not care. I was not keeping. I was not keeping track at that point. And, and like to be honest, I did kind of want to include George, but the main reason I wanted to do it because it was honestly just because I wanted to work with you on more stuff. Yeah, like, it wasn't really feasible with VT, or not VT, uh, Live and Reloaded, because uh, at this point we were, unbeknownst to us, again we were winding down production. There was only going to be one more episode, so I figured, well, I guess this is kind of the only thing we can do. So okay, here you go, more George, throw him in. Well, Even yes, if he doesn't really fit. Yeah. But he was popular. And around that time, someone yeah. else popped into the mix. So, I want to bring this up in the commentary because I remember telling you about the story of, like, during my senior year of high school uh, when we, like, we had a really fun off day 
and we went to like with some stuff of a we were gonna go to like Dave and Buster's, the music institution, like a lot of stuff, and we we literally had this moment where we were all walking in a line to Denny's, and I just kept being reminded of the tale of two tales, <laughs> where they just finally decide to go to Denny's. <laughs> so I'll be totally honest. When I made this, this was one hundred percent a slam against Denny's. No pun intended. But now I love Denny's, so I guess it's come full circle. <laughs> Gum right back at your dumbass. Oh, speaking of dumbass. Oh, I hate this scene. I hate it. Yeah, I'm so Ew. fucking Kermit in the shower. <laughs> got the chompies. I. One of the few regrets I have on this video is I was too nice to got the chompies. I hate We're not it. Got the chompies yet. I know, but it just it reminded me of that because like I keep thinking that clip is from Got the Chompies because all Got the Chompies is is just screaming. I hate it. Political commentary with Bob. <laughs> so how about that Ross Perot, right? Hey. <laughs> Let me tell you this, the North American Free Trade Agreement is the worst thing that we have ever done as a society, and I feel that it is time that we undo it for the sake of all of America. And I bet there's going to be like three of you who know what I'm talking about. I kind of have different opinions depending on the day, although there are very few Yeah, so here we come to the dark age of VTA with the Rabbids. Yeah, the TV episode was what really started it, because it was all just like, I'll just do some random goofy stuff. And then that's really all they oh, what? So Dorbies. <laughs> Everywhere I look, I see Dorbies. But yeah, this was like the age where I, I think this is when I tuned out actually when it, when I wasn't you know voicing a character because it was just kind of getting a little annoying, a little loud, just random, and I'm like, eh. Yeah. I, was, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm like, eh. And like it might have at the time, I don't know. I think, like, the weird thing is when someone would say that to me, I would, it bothered me a little bit, but at the same time, I kind of knew that they were right, but also the show had been, like, so ingrained in its style that there was nothing I could do, and whenever I tried to change it up, like I said later, it didn't really work, and like I said, that guy who, quote-unquote, confronted me about exaggerating, like, no, nah, no, that that was a thing. People complained. You just didn't get to see it because, like I said, I deleted comments. And it wasn't even just that. For the first hour, I would always, like, hover over my YouTube inbox and, like, keep refreshing. So as soon as it was, like, a bad one, like, nope, nope, nope. Until yeah. I decided to post it to the channel in its unfinished the, state. If you ever the band wondered episode. in Medium Im or not Medium cool Mementos, uh, Veggie Tales Abridged, why it's the so comments funny. seem disproportionate no to the views cool. more so than a normal YouTube video, that's probably why. Because there would be like 8,000, 10,000 views and yes. like maybe, I don't know, the rabbits were actually getting angry 15 comments. Oh my god. I do remember seeing, like, before you deleted, like, a lot of them, I did see, like, a whole plethora, but I'm getting ahead of myself with a specific episode. Um, I'll talk about that later. But yeah, the band episode. I hate the I remember, band episode. I actually remember, I remember recording my George lines for the band episode, actually, before it was canned. I was wondering what happened to that. I'm so glad it didn't come out. That would have been one of the biggest bombs. Right up there was Summer Vacation. Though people like Summer Vacation, I... Again, ahead of myself. Up there on my biggest list of YouTube regrets, VTA Summer Vacation is in the top three. I remember... My TV no good crushed. things that come out of VTA <laughs> Summer Vacation. And some people have said that they liked it. Great, I I'm glad you did. I loathe it with a passion. And I'd never, ever go back to revisit them. To be fair, I rarely go back and visit VTA anyways. But yeah. Oh no! It's coming! Got the chompies! Hate! Although I do like the part with Jerry. That was actually kind of funny, how he's like some adventurer who gets called, but he gets sidetracked along the way. Yeah. And his whole thing was just that he had to, like, be quiet for ten seconds and he couldn't do it. Damn. 
I like nothing yeah, this else. This is though. when the Puppet Master also was a bigger threat here. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I remember recording this one too, and then I, I remember I was having a lot of fun at the time, but then I think I think at the end I was like. What wow, did I just record? Deserves a three out of ten. It's only I don't even think I saw this when it premiered. Good. Has any merit to I'll tell you, man. Because again, I was tuning out because it was starting to kind of get too loud and obnoxious for my liking. Honestly, right around this point, it started to do the same. I think I even mentioned in the video, once the... And now for something completely different, when that came out, it was like, all right. No, I'm done. I'm now just doing this because I have to. Yeah. And, now for oh. and speaking of which, here it is. It the, the penguins. Four, eight, <laughs> seven. Again. Puffins. This is officially where the show stopped becoming fun. That's the new spinoff. Well, you haven't heard of it? Yeah. We'll find out soon. Nope. So this episode started off <laughs> oh, man. A sort of serious tone. I remember, I think I, I don't even, I don't, did I, I think I saw this when it did premiere, though. I'm, I'm not remembering, I, I think, I, well, this was a little after, but it's because it was Penguins-based, and it was a little funny, because I like some of the one-liners. Yeah. In case the title didn't tip people off, this was, again, trying to take the series in a different direction, at least not being as loud and random. It was still loud and random, but less so than Got the Chompies. <laughs> By the way, take a drink every time I've name dropped Got the Chompies in this episode where I talk about Got the Chompies a lot. Do, 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 do. Got the Chompies no, is on I'm 15 mind. seconds behind on the video because main event wants to advertise a dated Christmas ad. Christmas? I celebrate Festivus, man. Yeah, good old Major Stump. He doesn't post anymore. I checked on him not too long ago. And yeah. It seems like he's left the internet. A lot of people have left the internet, to be fair, in the last, like, few years. And now more major YouTubers are leaving. Like this is dating the video quite well, a bit, but oh well. <clears throat> Does this mean that there's going to be a three, two, one penguins abridged? Who's leaving? Uh, Matt Pat is leaving. What? Uh, Meat Canyon is stepping down from animations a little bit, and some others like uh, Captain Sprinkles. I don't know what his name is, but he's leaving too. Captain Sparkles. Oh no. Yeah, he's leaving too. What's going on with Matt Pat? Really. I don't know what's going on. I just heard that he's leaving. Huh. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I left all. I left a few years ago. Oh, I need to bring up the screen tearing because this made me pull my hair out editing these videos. But then I found out I saw a lot of modern video essays, like either around the time I was making media mementos. Uh, helping yes. edit the videos the and then like seeing right other video essays and a lot of them have the same problem so it's not just me yes, i feel happier <gasps> 26 minutes 26 minutes 20... of pain i guess mr uh, i remember trying to i could not finish this when i was editing this was just so painful i hate it dude time we come back the, do you ever have those times where you just want to, like, go back in time and, like, talk to your old self? This is one of those, because I knew exactly what I was going through at this time. This is right when the burnout was starting to spike. This is right when I was, like, starting to go through some stuff in my head. Because, you know when you're a teenager and you kind of have, like, the crisis about, like, who you are, what you're going to do, like, what the world is? I, I had that super late when I was in college, states away from my family, and all I had was just my roommates who uh, found out the hard way what I was going through. They were very happy to do so, and I was very happy to let. And I can I can feel it in here. This was a little bit before like it got as bad, but like it wasn't a super big problem now i don't like think but i can start to see the seeds of like, like what would become you know some people wanted yeah own shows to be i kind of wish i said something though some like that's the one thing i feel i'm kind of kind of pissed off at myself about is because um i was i was preoccupied on my own thing of course um, i had my own problems i had my own um life goals and paths at the time i was finishing high school 
but man, like, I wish I spoke up because, you know, on instinct, if you're going through something like this now, I would almost immediately just come talk to you about it, right? Yeah. But we weren't close yet. We still were a few, like, a year off probably at this point. But I, man, I still feel like I should have done something, you know? It's okay, you didn't know. No idea I think this, and they got all yeah, this was a couple months before, before the Lost Crucius call where audition, you ended up becoming one of my best friends. From when a tried yeah. To for the show, and, it didn't exactly go so and I'm well. thankful for, for that, this, for that call, having us get to really, um, really understand each other, uh, our interests, our passions, and, and even our, even our struggles, them, even though surface I'm level, um, at the time, like, we are, and it's just led us to here now, like, just looking back and reflecting on... Whatever the hell was going on with this. <laughs> oh! Wrong failure. Wrong failure. Yeah, I remember the, uh, this. The, the uh, infamous uh, rabbit server interaction. One of many. I really wish the old TAS production server was still up so I could go see those old rabbit things. Yeah. I, mean, I don't blame you for deleting everything, but still. Okay, <laughs> Yeah, I will actually say, uh, one or two of the crew members did say, like, hey, the show's getting, like, out of control and stuff. Uh, I don't remember why I didn't take their words to heart. I really probably should have. But again, by this point, I kind of knew what worked, and I had to stick with it, even if I didn't think it was funny myself. Because remember, the, the point of this show, at this point, was supposed to be transitioning to the dark stuff and the stories. When the villain comes yeah. in, that's when it's supposed to change. But... I just stuck too closely to what I guess the audience wanted, which sounds bad, but that's not what the show needed to be at the time. Not at all. There are sometimes they only last a couple minutes, but every so often I'll think, maybe we should go back and try again. And then I realize, no, that's never going to work. What are you kidding? It's a waste yeah. of time. No one wants to do that again. <laughs> and you were, and again, like we keep saying, you were different back then. We were different people back then. We're not going to recapture the same magic because we just moved on to other better things. Yeah, man. It's kind of like with uh, VeggieTales Live and Reloaded. It would be, you know, a fair bit different, but it would still be grounded in the original show and the original VeggieTales show as well. It would just be kind of off and different enough to where it'd still be good, but people would, you know, pick up that something's wrong. With this, yeah. it would be like 95% different. It wouldn't even be the same show. Oh my show. god. Like, what would be the point? It's like, say for example, you brought Dave the Barbarian back as a revival, but you recast everybody, you changed all the archetypes, you made it resemble that old direct TV parental guide saying that, like, Fang was trying to take over, Candy was, like, really wise, and you turn it into that. you just have to course, sit there and wonder one, any, why did they make this way. if it's not the same so show and a VTA revival would be the same thing yeah and those were dark days I remember uh, Rizio the guy who uh, have the It'll have the he did the kid fusion voices and he did a couple so others we were pretty good friends at the time haven't talked as much lately but uh, I remember I was in Petoskey Michigan or not Petoskey. No, I was in Detroit that night. Uh, just coming back from visiting some family. And uh, I just kind of let loose on everything. T telling them everything I'd been feeling. And that night was what made me realize VTA and the kind of wild fan base. What am I saying? Kind of wild. The very wild fan base was at the root of it all. And that if I didn't do something soon, like take a break or something, or if need be, break free from the show, it was only going to get worse. And from there, I, I knew there was, there was no more running, there was no more denial. I had to do something, but I, I, I didn't know what. Where do you go from here when your biggest show... And the only the one that your audience cares about and lets you know about very frequently 
when that is now the biggest burden going on with your online life. You can't just cut it out. That's the only reason people are watching. It's the only reason people stick around for you, because you know that you're making them laugh. You're not making something you want to make, but you're making them laugh. But you also know that if you make anything else, they're not going to care. Because they're not really there for you. They're just there to see funny pickle man scream and pop culture reference and any other crap that comes out. It does something to a person. But Dole's Revenge did end up getting the reception. I was hoping... Yeah, you're talking about that right now. I was saying, like, in, the, in this section, like, oh, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they didn't know where it was going to go from here. The Puppet Master had finally erased... And, when, and it really and sucks, because I remember so now, you had, like, happen? I think what either before or after Dole's Revenge, Revenge we were you were talking to me in person on our first meetup in person mm-hmm. about how you really wanted to just go crazy with these arcs and everything. In other words, he needed a new host for yeah, and none of that happened because of this. Yeah, I I remember that meetup, and I was talking about all these these twists and the changes that would happen, all these developments, how summer vacation was going to be. I think it was supposed to be bigger than it was, and what it turned out to be was just a gag based pile of nothing. Yeah, yeah, like you said, they wanted them to like actually explore the world on their. It was like their vacation, and then they actually start finding like new features and exotic landscapes and characters, and further delve deeper into what was going on. But of course, I I just couldn't take it anymore because of the rabbits. I had to stop. It was the last time any semblance of fun was And yeah, those, those will never come out. In fact, I barely loved. remember and half of them. Producing the episode was very stressful. However, this one was kind of Oh, and by the way, the kid fusion like video that popped up a little bit ago out, with the I really funky looking Bob and Larry, that no longer exists so online. I guess the VTA folks thought it was a little too funny and flooded their comments, so they took it down. I didn't actually intend for that. Man. It's like, oh man, I mean, it's kind of crappy, but you tried. You tried. I wanted to make something new. Another one of my biggest regrets on VTA is not utilizing the guy who played the duck more. He was a very good actor. Seemed like a very cool guy. And if he's watching now, if you want to get involved in something, reach out. We might be able to find something for you. And uh, he was going to be utilized a lot more. But again, like Billy just mentioned, all those arcs and all the plot developments we had planned, we, we could not make it happen. And it wasn't feasible to keep the show going. So they had to go to the wayside, you know? I was watching some TV trash and he was talking about baby blues. That's one and of here it comes. The of birth of Media Mementos. I'm judging the show purely off of what Never he heard says. of it. If I really want to have an actual opinion I don't know, man. Show, I, I haven't I heard of it either. It myself. <laughs> and I did, and I thought this would be the I don't know. It just seems like overly political <laughs> crap. Canceled, but I had to talk about it in some way, uh, shape, or form. I, couldn't I thought it was a food channel. I mean, and it's a subsidiary of the Food Network, so I can kind of see what you mean. <laughs> but it's it's a subsidiary in the same way that I shouldn't be alive or swamp people as part of History Channel. It's like, yeah, you are, but are you really? Yeah. <laughs> I do remember seeing the Baby Blues video when it premiered. Either that or it was the day after. Yeah, but that was a welcome was change from TV Talks. Oh, yeah. And I was actually really happy to see this because it's like, oh, my God, yeah, Trevor's actually finally evolving into making legitimate reviews and not TV Talks. <laughs> And I told nobody about this. It just kind of came out of nowhere. I intentionally dropped yeah. it there just to go like, all right, let's see what people think without me saying anything. There also was the awkward song at the end that people didn't I love that it wasn't like just the whole thing where they were like complaining about being too adult. And I saw Wad a lot of Lidaloo, um, while I was editing, obviously. The only thing I thought was like actually adult adult was when he was like swimming in champagne. Like that's too much for for you. I guess there was also demons and stuff in there, but at the same time, look, I'm a Christian. But like, it was like goofy demons. Like you watch like monster shows, I'm sure. Yeah. 
And, you know, I'm a Christian. I don't like demons at all. I think they suck. But these are fictional demons. They're just goofy little idiots. They don't even really yeah, accomplish anything in the story. Yeah. Like, I don't know, but that was stupid, honestly. And then you have this, uh, this provoking um, stock photo. I always use it in Medium, always use it in Medium Mementos videos. Anyway, here we are. Having crazy vacation. Adventures, and they would be so, in an active effort to ignore summer episode, vacation, earlier in this commentary, oh, you mentioned that there was a certain video where you saw this flood of rabid comments. Have we reached it yet? How hard it would be I think that was in a... I think that was the Fiat recap. We just passed it. Oh, uh, yeah. I wrote... I remember going like delete, 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 delete a lot. Yeah, on and that I one. gradually saw them disappear. Actually, because I remember people were like, I think this one stupid one was. It's like if you have like if you don't have Mickey Mouse in this thing, and I'm like, okay, that's dumb because for one, have you seen Goofy Movie or Ducktales? And two, that's just a really like it's just like come on, you don't have to have these two buffoons just constantly. Yeah, I never got that rage. I never understood why. You liked, and now for something completely different, and Bob and Larry were barely in it. And I think there was a whole episode where Bob or Larry was just, yeah, it was Bob, was just straight up not in it whatsoever. And that went over okay. Well, actually, no, it didn't. I do remember complaints. What am I saying? But this was a whole other level. It's like, do you at least think it's funny? Give me something. And it wasn't just one person who said that either. It was a lot. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I'll be honest. You're going to hear you're going to hear the classic Billy here, so be warned, strap yourselves in. This one pissed me off, honestly. This one pissed me off on premiere. It was not funny. Um, it was a complete disservice to the episode that it, you know, it was parodying, and it was just a waste of potential of like something that could have been something more comedy, story, hybrid driven. Could you tell I was just phoning it in and didn't care? I was, I was like, what the fuck happened? And it was around I this think time I was, I sat down and talked with yeah, I was like, after that one where I'm like, dude, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was talking to some friends so and I was like, yeah, they like it, but they give me money, so at what I cost? Because I, I wasn't, like, I was proud of it. I think, deep down, I I think mostly from me, denial. Because that was kind of the only thing I could do. But yeah, yeah. It's, even when I was like recording it, there was something off. It was kind of like got the chompies where it was like, what did I just record? Only in this case, it wasn't like, okay, that was something. It was more like, all right, like, I guess, I guess this will do. Uncle Stumbly's funny. I'm sure the rabbits will love that. Anyways, what am I going to do next? And the answer was not VTA. It just kind of changed. So that was the last quote-unquote real episode of VTA. Everything else would go Sonichu episode 13 and uh, change the series. Actually, scratch that. I know it made them worse because I made a part two where I say exactly that. Yeah, I remember that one. I still, I guess a couple rabid ones slept through. Dang it, I can't talk. Slipped through the cracks. I guess I just didn't delete them all or something. There were a couple I left up because I just, I don't know, really. I don't know why I do a lot of things around here. There I was in a car in a hotel parking lot in Chandler, Arizona. And I didn't know how I was going to do it except for put it on a hiatus, I guess. I was thinking over ways to get the show done. I remember the plan. Like, yeah, you wanted to go a hiatus and then return it in like early 2020. But then a lot of people, I think I was there. This is where I don't remember. Yeah, you were definitely there. Said you have to end it now. Including the whacked one. Which yeah, I you were 100% lots there. And lots of blood, sweat, and tears into. I don't remember everybody who was there, but I remember, like, the key players, and that was definitely you. Because I, I thought, okay, the show's going to be fun to make again, 
if I just wait a little while, if I take a break, then I can put the show back to where I want it to be, it can be funnier again, but no, I, again, I think I was just in denial because I didn't want the reason people watched to go away, but then when you guys helped me see sense, I was able to finally get rid of it, and I don't talk to most of the people in that server, if you guys ever want to reach out again, you know where to find me, but if you're listening, thank you all very, very much for helping me get out of the VTA mess, I can't thank you enough, it's all thanks to you, and here we go with, this is like the most emotional part, yeah, this is the most emotional part for me, like, just, Knowing how long it's been is just getting me choked up a little bit. You can just hear... You can hear it in every single line in Uh Uh-Oh. Everything is dripping with, like, anger and bitterness. Even in the stuff before the show goes off the rails... You can tell, yeah, he, he's done. I think someone even said in the replay chat, like, all right, yeah, I, I think we know what he's trying to say here. Yeah. yeah. Here's my here's my part, because this is where... And I'll, this wasn't... I would say it's not as brutal as what you went through, but it was still really fucking annoying, because people just kept referring to me as George in the servers and everything, and just, like, asking to do the bits and stuff. I would have done the same thing. In fact, I did. And it was just like, guys, like, come on. Can you just like, can I just talk about shit that I like and just converse with you guys without having to talk about this crap? I remember that. And like, I'll admit I did it a little bit at first and I'm sorry. But eventually, I think, yeah, I think you even saw it back then. I was like, all right, guys, uh, I think I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Yeah. And with you, like, it was more just like a, like, more just joke pat on the back, really. It wasn't anything bad. Yeah, we were just goofing off. And then I would do the Larry stuff right back. Yeah. I think that you can actually feel for the characters for once. And it was a nice conclusion. Yeah, I'm still proud of these two. They're... I'm there's limbo. something else. It's kind of nice here, but there's not as many limbo yeah. games as I <laughs> I love this. I love I love post game. Post game and uh oh. Some of my finest work on that old channel. Cry myself to sleep. The story was pretty gripping, I gotta say. And <laughs> the Kyle is uh, is lampy, <laughs> and he just gets ignored. Actually, it's it's true. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned this in the video, but one of the main reasons that post-game was formatted the way it was was because I was trying to incorporate all the, like, weird characters and stuff that never got to be in VTA proper because there were so many other stories. And even back when I was planning on canning the show, Jonah was going to be the end. Or, uh, yeah, Jonah was going to be the end the way we had it now, but then before that, I think it was going to go to, like, Gideon or something. So all these other characters we never got to see, well, I guess this was their only way to really make an appearance. Yeah. I still remember that one guy who gave me death threats because he didn't get cast as a very minor role. Wow. I really wish I saved those videos. And uh, if anybody knows who that is, please do not go harass him. That was many, many years ago, and I'm sure he's grown up since then. We've all moved on from VTA. It's just something we gotta get through. I started having a little bit more of a critical eye towards VeggieTales Abridged. And no, it wasn't influenced by emotions or anything. I, I think I didn't really watch VeggieTales Abridged after. I mean, I downloaded... No, no, that was, like, later when I downloaded the videos. And then I think I remember doing some funny little edits just to occupy my time in 2020, but... I didn't really watch it for, like, a year after that until you brought up doing this video. I remember when we, more specifically you, went back to go rewatch those. I was driving back from visiting my parents' place, which at the time was a little over an hour away. So we were on the phone in order to occupy the time. 
and we were just going back through memory lane. We were talking about the episodes, what we thought of them now, what we thought of them at the time. And wouldn't you know it, we didn't like the show very much. <laughs> In case you can't tell by this video here. Want to go back to that? I did not see that as worth it at all. As I said though in the video though, I don't regret making VTA. It was a bad experience, sure, but I also grew a lot and I learned a lot and I met a lot of people because of it. Like Billy. I don't know if we would have gotten as close or close at all if it wasn't for the Jeetles I bridged. Oh yeah. I unlisted all the episodes. They are all on private now. People were freaking out. All the Sometimes I kind of think of like, man, if I knew who some of these actors were to this day, I'd kind of want to not exactly reach out to them. Though, you know, if they ever wanted to reach out to me, I'd totally welcome it. But I kind of want to do a where are they now sort of thing. Going to their channels, yeah. seeing what they're up to, even if they're still on the internet. And if you're wondering if I'm ever going to make them public. Oh, yeah, the old no, recut version of episode 13. Uh, let's just uh, breeze exactly past right. that, though. Let's, let's not discuss that anyway. here. I will say, though, it did get me to where I am today. So I this is the conclusion it here. Um, it helped me learn how to write better. Honestly, I feel like, if for any conclusion, like, it's kind of said within this video, I feel like this commentary is more just, like, us adding some extra little details here and there and just having some banter about what the hell happened behind the scenes, some other stuff that was left out, but I think everything here is, like, tightly packed in this video, so if you want to, like, actually listen to the thing again then you can just watch the actual video and i highly encourage that you do you would really appreciate the ad reference i mean more exposure to perhaps one of the best media mementos videos of the billy era i would certainly think so things that are still around i am looking at some of these and i can the screaming in vta though i hate that i hated it too dude recording that was terrible but again it's what the network wants why bother to complain show yeah that was great. But this does serve as a lesson for not just me, but the rest of you too. Don't be afraid to think for yourself. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. I remember when the videos yes, were coming down for the first time and the rabbits, they mostly kind of... You yourself aren't happy. I'm not saying that I don't even know how to describe it. I guess they were just trying to like one last ditch effort to kind of save the show. And your mental health. Didn't work. And then by then... I just had it. And normally, I try to hold my tongue. Uh, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I've got kind of a fiery temper. You wouldn't know it from me, you know, because I'm really mild-mannered and stuff online. But I like to clap back, and it's not it's not nice. It's not the right thing to do, but for that one time, I'll kind of allow it as sort of, I guess, a therapeutic measure. I take that to a lot of people who were causing me so much grief. I don't have any more but yeah, I try not to do that as much anymore, or have some as of late, at all. In fact, some alone and just not nice. Like he's working on this graphic novel about and well, and the video is about to wrap up. Special. Any final thoughts? Angel's coming <laughs> back. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, I, I think and we uh, sure spoke about this enough here so thank you all very much for watching there's going to be some more billy stuff coming throughout the year probably going to record these ahead of time next week i'm thinking a commentary on max Payne, as someone suggested there's a lot to talk about with that one but yeah veggie tales abridged to this day still very very proud of the content we made here and to this day even though it's still kind of buried because of all the videos that have come since, it's still held in some very high regard. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What do you guys think? Have you seen Veggie Tales Abridged before? And uh, I know we're going to be ending this a little bit early here, but I think we've spoken enough. We've been talking for an hour twenty seven some minutes here. Comment below and let me know because I'm always. I need to rest my vocal cords. Yeah, man, I got. I'd like to thank our I got a mighty need for some water. I got the chompies for water, if you will. And I bet if you took part in that drinking game, you are wasted. Hell yeah. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> yes. Goodbye. Wow, my throat is sore.